we are tracking two active disturbances and a third one has piqued my interest down the road what's going on guys i'm certified meteorologist jonathan kegis in this video we are talking about first and foremost the disturbance north of the turks and caicos that could impact florida and parts of the southeast corner of the united states over the next couple of days then we're going to jump down back into the caribbean for our friends being impacted by a tropical wave invest 95 l this is not going to develop and it's going to have a very short-lived life as a tropical wave as it's going to get ripped apart by shear momentarily and then this is the one that we're going to look at stick around towards the end of the video a wave moving off of africa as we speak pretty strong model signal here that we're going to have development as we close out july and enter august so you want to make sure you stick around for that hey before we get into the video if you do want to stay updated on all things weather especially as we are in hurricane season you have to hit subscribe please do that and if you find this content helpful hit the thumbs up button for me. It really does help us out a lot. So first things first, we're going to start with this disturbance a couple hundred miles off of the Florida coast. This is going to be north of the Turks and Caicos and kind of drifting towards the United States. It has a little bit of thunderstorm activity. It is very disorganized. And it really isn't anticipated to organize much. The environment is marginally conducive for some development. We're going to get all into that in just one second. But here is our area of disturbed weather tropical wave that's going to be heading in this direction now if you're watching from florida georgia or the carolinas we could have increased moisture extra rain chances as we close out this work we can head into the weekend because of this entity hurricane center officially giving this a 20 percent chance to become a tropical system over the next seven days so again it is low although looking a little healthier from a satellite perspective because of the increased thunderstorm activity although that's something that does happen overnight we typically do see more thunderstorms develop it's the opposite of what we see on land more storms overnight early into the morning as a result of tropical activity Nonetheless, though, we're going to break all of this down. So here we go. This is the vorticity. This is the model spin in the, in the low levels of our atmosphere. And here is our disturbance. So again, we're looking for more kind of something like that, a consolidated ball there of red. That means that we have some increased, some stronger, relatively speaking, low level rotation. Here is our guy right here. It is kind of weak and it is very strung out over a long distance again that is not good news for the system they want to try to get a little consolidated like this and then you see the wind flow here you see the wind arrows coming in from the east going up like that and then coming back down that is an open wave again we want to see that circulation the storm does we don't we want these things to stay open waves so that they weaken and really don't impact too many people in a very strong way. So there you go. That's later on on the 25th of July. Notice this. Here we go. Early morning, July 27th. And we still have a very long string bean looking thing through the Bahamas off of the Carolina coast. Still that open wave as well with the wind field. Now, as we take things out further, you saw a little flare up there of red. European solution tries to get its act together as it moves over the Gulf Stream of the, over the very warm waters off the Florida coast. Still, it really never consolidates it into anything. We're going to talk much more about that from the ensemble forecast when we break down that other wave moving off of Africa. That's going to be, again, in a few minutes, so stick around with me uh, for that. That was the European solution. The American GFS is very, very similar. Here we go with our wave north of the Turks and Caicos, still strung out. And again, we have that open wave pattern. This even keeps it weaker. It's kind of in pieces as it moves towards the Florida coast into the southeast corner. Now, you see the wind field again out of the east. This will likely increase moisture for Florida, maybe Georgia and South Carolina as well. As we get into the Thursday, Friday, maybe hanging on to Saturday time frame. But still, this does not look like a big deal. Something to be mindful of. Yes, pay attention. Keep checking back for those future forecasts just to make sure we're not seeing anything crazy going on with it. But at this time, this looks like it's going to be a very low-end system and it probably won't even consolidate into anything tropical other than being that open wave. But again, we are watching that closely just for any weird changes with the system. Again, because the environment is conducive marginally and the water temperature blazing hot right now off the Florida coast. We've talked about that a lot on this channel. Here is the kind of blotchy blob of green there. That is the rain associated with that 
system that I just showed you. And notice that moisture surge coming in. There's 10 o'clock in the morning on Thursday. So again, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, the Keys, the Bahamas, North Cuba parts of the space coast of florida that's what we'll start to see the extra rain come in this continues through thursday as we move into friday still some lingering moisture but then most of that starts to push back out into the eastern gulf of mexico anytime anything gets into the gulf of mexico we're going to watch so if it does continue to follow this trajectory we're going to keep a close eye on that it's even warmer across parts of the gulf coast with the exception of right along the coast anyway so we're going to watch that closely if it does, in fact, get itself into the North Gulf Coast. All right, for my friends in the Caribbean. Also, again, if you're finding this content helpful, hit that thumbs up button for me. Again, it really does help us out a lot. Thank you guys so much for watching and welcome to all the new subscribers that have found our channel. Pinpointing the tropics. This is Invest 95L. Again, we are not going to see this thing develop into a tropical system of depression named storm or hurricane certainly not it is bringing some very gusty squally heavy rain though to parts of the caribbean islands especially the leeward and windward islands saint lucia saint vincent and the grenadines guadalupe martinique dominica antigua and barbuda parts of the virgin islands would get in on this rain as well trinidad and tobago we had some heavy rain last night also some heavy rain moving through the abc islands as a result of this very unorganized very broad tropical wave now again tropical waves are impactful it's not going to get a name it's never going to get a name but it is bringing some heavy rain so do watch out for the potential for some flash flooding and some wind gusts 30 40 miles an hour as it moves to the islands we'll try to get some of that rain into puerto rico we could use that big time to help cool us down we all know it if you're living there it has been hot mentioned about the wind shear or at least this is going to never become a name storm because of this now it's going to get into the eastern caribbean and then all this blue that you see right there, that light blue color, that is going to be the increased wind shear that will kind of put the nail in the coffin on this area of disturbed weather moving through the Caribbean. So again, that's going to be a non-issue other than, again, watch out for some flash flooding on the islands on a localized scale. Just keep that in mind. Again, these things do not need to be tropical storms or tropical depressions or hurricanes to cause some impacts because we know we are loaded with that tropical moisture all right here we go next wave it doesn't look impressive at all it's very strung out the intertropical convergence zone kind of has some thunderstorms going on the winds coming off of here the trade winds coming out of here helping to get thunderstorms rolling this next wave though working its way off of africa as i clear my screen for you does have some decent model support here and again that's going to be merging off here through the cabo verde islands now tis the season where we do start to focus on these more long track events in the main development region, which is characterized as the area from the Lesser Antilles to right off of the coast of Africa. This is the main development region, MDR. So if you hear me talk about it or hear others talk about the MDR, that's what they are talking about there, the main development region of the Atlantic Hurricane Basin. I want to show you now the ensemble forecast here. If you watch this channel, if you follow this channel, again, if you do find this conversation helpful, let me know where you're watching from, well, number one. And also hit that subscribe button. We'd love to have you on board as we kind of track the tropics together here. Look at this. Here is the ensemble forecast. First, I want to show you the European ensembles, and it's just like a band. So the European, we all know the European, we all know the GFS, but they also have their ensembles. There's 51 members, there's different initial conditions kind of put into the model because we don't have a ton of information on this thing. And when you start to get a bunch of members coming on board, even with different human tweaked conditions to start, then you start to get a little more confidence that the environment can support a storm. So we see here, let me go over, bring my crosshairs up, and you see where I'm at. This is August 3rd. Now, I want you guys, especially in the Northeast Caribbean, to be paying attention as we get towards July 29th, July 30th, because we'll see that thing around here. But as of August 3rd, note there's a fork in the road, and this is what we typically see. There's some strong model supporting, and you see a bunch of L's here. These aren't all storms. These are the different ensemble members hinting that we're going to have something out here from around the greater Antilles to the Turks and Caicos to maybe even to the east of Bermuda. Big spread, that is typical. I will say, here is our big area of high pressure that's going to be steering it up here. You see that pink color? The stronger the storm, the quicker 
We like to get these things really strong, by the way, right out in the main development region because then there's a better opportunity for them to get flung back out to sea and not impact anybody. If it does stay on the weaker side, though, this is what we're going to have to be on guard for towards the Bahamas into the southeast corner of the U.S. because the water temperature out here, as mentioned with that other wave, is very warm. If there's not increased wind shear out there, then we could be talking about this area alert. Again, that is way, way too early to even think about that. But again, we are heading into August. We should all have a heightened set of awareness, especially as we get into hurricane season, of course, which started on June 1st. But now as we venture through July and then as we get towards the mean season, as it's known, the back half of August towards the peak of hurricane season through September. GFS ensembles kind of paint the same thing. And I want to go back actually to the Euro and show you again that little wave off of the Florida coast or near the Florida coast. Only a few members on board. That's what those lines are. So three out of the 51 showing it. Again, it's not a high probability for development. Real quick, again, GFS ensembles showing just a few members on board to meander around Florida. So very low shot there that we actually get something organized. Rain, though, does look like it's increasing the likelihood of rain near Florida. Same kind of deal here. GFS on board for that wave that I showed you off of Africa. There it is again, kind of moving off. Weaker Solution has a couple of members on board towards the Greater Antilles, towards the Leeward Islands. And then Stronger Solution has this thing wrapping up around the, uh, the high over the Azores. There is Bermuda right in here, so then we'd have to pay attention for that. Again, all of that stuff is way too early to iron out. However, we do have strong model guidance, or at least strong ensemble guidance here from both the American and the European solutions that suggest that that wave could develop as we close out July and start August. So again, nothing to freak out about. Want to be clear about that. There's no hype. There's no garbage on this channel. That is why we are here to break things down scientifically and meteorologically. But we're getting into August. That's when we start the Cabo Verde season with those storms rolling off. The Atlantic is juiced in terms of the water temperature. So we're going to watch that closely again. Just want to give you an early heads up on that front. Finally, a bonus for you. We are also watching more Saharan dust. This is the thickest plume that has reached the United States. It is now kind of even creeping back up further into central Florida towards the Orlando area. South Florida, we had it crazy on the 24th of July, and we are still under the influence of that really thick dust. So again, air quality issues for people with sensitive groups, certainly a thing. We have dust towards Cancun, back towards the Bahamas. And then also sneaking in towards South Texas, that light film on your screen. Let me bring out my trusty arrow. There's that light film south of San Antonio, south of Houston. But all of this is going to pinwheel up into Texas. And I'm going to show you that here with our model forecast. You see where we have those arrows kind of pushing away? This is a big area of high pressure right along the North Gulf Coast. So we are going to kind of have this dust sneak up be pushed by that area of high pressure so let me get my erasers and my markings off and i'll show you the model forecast so that light plume of dust moves up into san antonio towards dallas and fort worth into houston as we get into wednesday and especially thursday that's three o'clock in the morning so if you see any bright sunrises or vibrant sunrises more than normal it's because the light is kind of bouncing off the extra particulate matter 15 to twenty thousand feet above your head we might have that perfect concentration there where it is really thick in the darker, note the scale here, in the darker areas, we had that really, really thick stuff. Alrighty, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Watching those three things, again, I'm not overly concerned about the thing off of Florida. Certainly, though, could bring us some heavier rain in the Sunshine State. Going to watch it closely still. Invest 95L, the tropical wave in the Caribbean, kind of petering out as expected. And then... We're going to keep a very, very close eye on that thing that is rolling off of Africa as we speak. Could be one of those long track things we watch for a week or two. We'll keep you posted right here. Again, if you found this content helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you do want to come along for the ride as we track all things in the weather world, especially this hurricane season, please hit subscribe. We would love to have you on board here. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We'll catch you next time.